Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap 4. Today is Monday, November 4th, and this is our Tech Syndicate version of Monday Night Paintball. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I got my buddy Jason Fertig behind the camera. We're gonna go over some of the stuff going on in the MagFed paintball world. He's gonna bounce some ideas off of me. Shout out to Tech Syndicate, a cool YouTube video that I watch every week. Um, this is actually their format, and I've tried it out for paintball, so just so they don't get mad at me for ripping them off. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start with here, per request from a customer, we're gonna give a shout out to Quick Reaction Force BNA. They are a Milsim team out of Germany. Looks pretty cool, most of the stuff on this page I can't really read, it's in another language, but it looks like they have some sick games. Um, so Fertig, MacFed in Germany, Europe and stuff, it's not really big over there, is it? Well, it seems to be uh, something that's taking off a little bit more. We've started moving a lot more product out towards that way um, through rep 4 uk our UK distributor, as well as uh, several of our other uh, 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 other companies that we uh, sell product to that act as right. uh, wholesalers for us or retail sales. We got rep 4 uk we got rep 4 russia we got rep 4 Malaysia. Yeah, um, we got Israel as well. Um, uh, Ecuador, I believe now. And Ecuador, Israel. right? Ecuador was asking for. They saw the big, the, the big truck, mm -hmm. and they were asking about um, the graphics for that thing. I, I don't know if they want to do a billboard or a truck or what, but they, they were asking for that the other week. So I sent that to them. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to see. Uh, see some more vehicles. I know. I like seeing it. I like seeing it grow. I really like seeing it grow. Um, definitely to other you know countries and stuff more so than even in the, even in the states. It's growing big here, but it's like seems like of course it's going to grow big here. But I love seeing other countries get into it. Plus, some of these people come up with some cool gear. Like you'll see all the Canadians wear like uh, what's that? Cad Pat. So they're wearing that CAD pad and they do stuff like their own way. It's pretty cool, especially the guys from South America. Those guys have some wicked gear. Yeah, I've, I've noticed with the uh, the MagFed stuff, it's bringing back a lot of the old school modding style stuff, stuff that you saw from back in the day. Right. Um, like the old brass and wood guys that you'll find like on M. Carter Brown and places like that that do all these custom, really cool, clean looking mods. It's all coming back now on the MagFed side. It's really you know, nice the to modding, see. modding, I like modding. Anything I do, whether it's, uh, you know, I'm into cars or motorcycles or anything, when you see somebody do their own custom work to get something exactly the way they want it to be, I respect it no matter what it is. So that's really cool about MagFed. It seems to be modding. It's like you, very few players buy this stock stuff. They always change it somehow, especially with gear like Molly. Even, even if you're not altering the vest, you're still choosing to put your pockets one way or another way. And that's in itself like a mod. It's really cool to see everybody customize their stuff. And no two people's vests are the same, really. Yeah, I don't even think my gear uh, stays the same from event to event. It always changes. I used to get in trouble in the military for making my vest in you know, different interesting ways, just trying new stuff. And new and interesting, it really isn't their thing. But yeah, I've been, I've been modding stuff since like uh, 2005. <laughs> now, while we're talking about the mods, though, you, uh, you were talking to me about some of the pictures we found earlier uh, on our Facebook page. Right, places. okay. Here's one. Sonam Wangdu, by the way. I've never talked to this guy, but he's posted a ton of pictures over the last year or so on our page. It's really cool stuff. He's got this cool, I think it's a TPX with some kind of uh, shroud body, body kit to it. I'm not really sure what to call it, but it's pretty cool. And um, he's posted pictures of his gear a lot. This one I thought was pretty cool because um, he integrated... He has the, the ear pro with the comms in it integrated with the fast helmet integrated with the uh, the Hawkeye mask, and I thought that was a pretty stellar mod. And the rest of his gear, if you've seen his pictures, is pretty squared away too. But um, this was this was a cool um, a cool photo. I wanted to give a shout out to Sonam Wengdu. Thanks for the awesome pictures, man. Make it look good. Uh, next up, Adrian Santano posted a picture of his marker. It's a stubby build. It looks really cool actually. I just wanted to give a shout out. I thought that was cool. It's nice and minimal. It's got just running irons on it. Got a pretty aggressive uh, grip on it. Look like, looks like he's running a Magpul sling on it. Um, pretty sick. So thanks for the photo. Adrian, I like the, like the shorter CQB look. With paintball it seems like the longer barrels don't really affect accuracy or something like what's what's the deal with that for today how does the the length versus accuracy um there is a sacrifice that you'll end up making the longer the barrel the less air efficient it is mm. um so people like a lot of people that use them um it's a it's a trade-off you gain a little bit of accuracy but you lose um some of your air your uh, shots per tank kind of a thing okay um 
other than that, uh, a lot of the guys do it. Most of it's for looks. Um, a lot of times, I'm, I'm personally, uh, you've seen some of my builds, Patrick. A lot of my stuff is short, set up. Uh, right. I usually stick around the 12 or 14 inch barrels. I've seen you make a few MKP2s. Yeah, I, I like the, the nice, short, compact. I'm, you know, I come too. from a pump background, so that's all that I've ever, you know, I've shot a lot of. And, uh, you know, even my 468, I don't like the long versions. I like mm. the, the nice, stubby, short, stuff, short guns. The long, long barrel, it's a really big nuisance, and if it's not giving you any benefit, you might as well just go short. This guy looks like he has like a 10, 10 inch barrel on it, and I've heard that like past 12 inches, it doesn't matter. Um, it, it, it's a, a lot of it's personal preference. Some people find I think a lot of it's rumors too. I can't yeah. really get a straight answer on that. I don't know if anybody's seriously scientifically tested that, but it's a lot that bounces back and forth. You'll always hear my this barrel and this you know is better than this barrel right. this length. Um, a lot of it comes down to personal preference, you know. It, it, obviously, if you're looking to do a sniper roll, you're going to have a longer barrel, regardless, because you want that look. Mm -hmm. um, I don't play that role as much, so like I, I set up the CQB, like you know, as you said, um, right. I tend to like getting down and dirty in the fights, right at in the front. Right. Um, 18 inch barrel for me would just mean smashing into walls, because <laughs> I have a bad habit of running into them as it is. Fair enough. All right, moving on. Cool, uh, cool marker, Adrian. Moving on. This is another one, Doug Jr. Uh, Doug Carnero Jr. I'm not sure how to say that middle name. Doug Jr. posted a photo of his marker. It looks pretty sick. Um, the buttstock on this one, it's like a Magpul buttstock, but it's uh, the hole through, it's big enough for a 13 CI. And I thought I thought that was a custom mod, but you, but you were saying earlier somebody sells that. Um, I believe it's uh, Stormworks. Um, I've seen them, uh, some of their work. They do a, a Magpul style 13 uh, or 17 CI tank stock. Is this like from the factories like this or they're modding it and selling um, them? From what I understand, from what I've seen on the forums and on the MagFed Facebook group and stuff, it looks like uh, something each one he hand makes. Um, so he definitely puts some time and effort into each and every one, and from okay. what I've seen, customers are loving it. So it's like that KSG that. shotgun guy. Yeah, where pretty he, much. It is a mod. Yeah, exactly. He's just, he's just very good at it, and he's doing it assembly line style. Okay. Exactly. Well, that's pretty cool. So what was the name of the company again? Uh, I believe it was Stormworks, but okay. we'll have to double check that for Stormworks, you. Stormworks, shout out. If that is the company name, shout out. Stormworks, cool buttstock. I like that. That's cool. Uh, moving on. Scott Logan. Asked me to advertise his game coming up. This is uh, Tap Team and Splat Action Paintball present Pacific Northwest MagFed slash Limited Ammo Milsim game. This is going down November 16th, um, 1, or 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Splat Action Paintball. It's going to be $30 a person. That uh, gives you free air. I feel like free air should just be always thrown in. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to fill up an air tank, right? Eh, wait for it feels to make money. Is everybody just doing the compressed air thing now? I mean, is CO2 going away or what? Because um, CO2 does cost money. Compressed air, uh, a lot of fields are starting to go to that more exclusively. It's right. a lot easier on them. All they got to do is flip the switch, turn on the generator. Right. They don't have to like, wait for a shipment of like CO2, right? It, exactly. It's also a lot safer for the staff to deal with. You don't have to worry about frostbite off the tank, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it freeze uh, O-rings? Yeah. It also, you also, with the CO2, you run the potential to really damage uh, the, the O-rings. Right, the, the temperature, temperature issue. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. if uh, the tank gets uh, liquid CO2 into your marker, it's going to expand, also cause velocity spikes, things like that. You know, so. you know what's funny? Just just firearms versus paintball. A gun, you can you can get it too hot. If you shoot it too much, you can get it too hot. And we're talking about how CO2 will freeze things. And isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's it kind of an interesting, uh, mm. interesting little factoid there. I've melted barrels before, not liquid, but <laughs> I'm, I remember distinctly seeing some saggy 50 cal barrels that were just laid into too long. It's interesting. <laughs> Anyway, um, so this is a limited ammo game. So it looks like um, you can do mag fed or 60 round hoppers or less. Okay, that's, that's really cool uh, seeing Usually that kind it's of 30. stuff coming in. Usually see 30. Yeah, that, that, what they're trying to do there is, it, uh, is they're trying to grow the mag fed by bringing more players into it in the limited ammo sense. Mm -hmm. So by allowing tack caps and small hoppers, they're letting guys with pumps and standard Titman markers with cyclone feeds get into the into the games or you know any other marker and just by limiting the amount of firepower they have on their gun at any point um, it keeps the game moving in right place. well it's a totally different it's a totally different one thing I'll notice when I go to D-Day and I'm in the action I'm filming like hopper fed game like D-Day that's huge I'll get shot a million times when I'm playing a mag fed game I got shot once at N-War 4 once. yeah I, I, the same thing with me 
dumb luck shot. You know, stomping out a smoke grenade, get shot doing that. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, and it was usually when I was in the smoke when I was getting lit up. Yeah, but it seems to be where we get caught. I only get I only got shot once in War Four all day game, and and uh, D Day I'll get shot every five minutes. Yeah, it seems pretty normal. Even uh, even working even at rec ball days, it's about mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mag fed mag fed play seems to be way different. A lot of people like it. Spot action paintball, by the way, it wasn't on the flyer, so I looked it up. It's three two one five South Grim Road in Molala, Oregon. Very cool. All right, paintball news for you. A little speedball. San Diego Dynasty secures a 2013 PSP Series title. Congratulations, San Diego Dynasty. They're like the Yankees of paintball, right? Yeah, they've uh, had a, an amazing uh, track record this year. Just win after win. Isn't it every year? Um, they always win? They, they've had a good track record overall, but this year, um, they, this just been stellar. It's, okay. They've taken trophy after trophy. I don't like that. Event. I don't like it when one team cleans up. I like every game to be a, a struggle. You know, like I'm into like motorcycle racing and there's this guy named Rossi that um, he just went one every time, won every race, every race, every race um, for uh, MotoGP. And eventually when he started to like get older and he started to lose more, that's when it got interesting because you're like, oh, he might not win uh, mm -hmm. versus you're watching and you're like, well, Rossi's going to win. I don't like any kind of sport where just one team's always going to win. It's just uh, I'm all about the like, underdog, honestly. I love upsets. That's why I like college football better than the pros, because they always fumble all the time. That's interesting. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, San Diego Dynasty. That's Dai's team, right? Uh, no, that is not. That's uh, really? no. Uh, Dynasty is not their uh, HK, and I believe Empire sponsored. Doesn't Empire own everybody? No. <laughs> Dai is totally separate from Empire. All right, uh, March eighth and 9th, uh, Zombie Land going on. Uh, tickets go on sale Tuesday, fifteenth of October at 7 p.m. UK time. So this looks like a European game since it's priced in euros. Yeah, those are uh, those zombie games are always fun. Yeah. Um, been to a couple different so ones. So you have to hire an employee to get shot repeatedly, or how does it work? It, it all depends on what the games are, uh, how the games are run. I've had some where basically you get shot and you turn into the zombie, mm. and then uh, you basically go back to oh, respawn and come back out, and there are always you know dedicated zombies as well. But there's I know about characters. the games where it's like you shoot a guy, now he's on your team. This one is actually looking, the graphics of it look as though there are like undead walking around with no guns. So. That could, it's, uh, it could be another twist that they put into the game. So I've seen a few of them like that, where they had designated role players there, zombies, mm. um, and then you have different factions, like a, a military like a, faction, a civilian faction. Sounds like a bad job, just getting shot all day. Personally, not for me. Sounds I like my job. The shooting myself, but <laughs> <Not> they're filming. <laughs> all right, so that looks pretty cool. Event coming up March eighth and 9th. Um, and our last event today, lockdown scenarios. Very cool group of guys are putting on Red Dawn. This is going down at Nicholas, California. That's north of Sacramento. It's a two-day paintball event. It's Veterans Day weekend. Cool. So you get that Monday off after you play to rest and relax. Very cool. Yeah, November 9th and 10th. And that's at Shooter's Paintball in Nicholas, California. $99 is going to give you a case of paint. Looks like it's going to be Carnage Tier is the kind of paint it's going to be. Carnage with a K. Unlimited Air. Um, HBA here. Um, it's a night. There's a night game uh, that the ninety-nine dollars pays for your parking, and there's also a raffle. Oh yeah, always fun. Um, some of the uh, some of the guys got out to uh, their last event, which was uh, the first one they held here in California, which was uh, Once Upon a Grim. Mm. Absolute awesome time. Yeah, I got the footage back from that. That looks pretty. That looked cool. Yeah, uh, myself and Finch got out there and just had an absolute Finch. blast. Right. Um, can't wait for this one. We're going to roll up there uh, with the Rap 4 truck, set up a small booth, be out there playing with you guys and have some product where just to show off and uh, try it. So you guys can maybe try out the field and uh, just let you guys uh, get a taste for what we do over here and our MagFed style. Um, you going to be able to make it out there to do anything? Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to go out there to you. I'm going to take some pictures and film some, some gameplay probably. Um, the helmet cam footage is awesome from this that kind of stuff, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also waiting on a few more helmet cams to get back from um, In War 4, by the way. So moving on from PayPal news, moving on just company news, um, stuff going on. I've had a lot of events in the last month or so. Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy month. Uh, K Nations, right. and we had uh, Operation End War. We had the MagFed, uh, MagFed only game number four, that was in uh, SC Village, that was in there somewhere. And then we just had Urban Shield, 
Urban yeah. Shield was cool. This was like a SWAT event. There's 36 different SWAT teams. They all showed up um, running about you know 30 or so different lanes, and we were on one lane, and that was an Amtrak train that supposedly you know had like terrorists on it, and they had to clear it. And that was really interesting. They're using four six eights and D mags with rubber uh, rounds. They didn't want to mess up the train. Now they had the the new PTR version. They were demoing PTR, for us and, uh, giving a true field test to, right? Right. Yeah. That was. Uh, I'd say that was our second field test. The first one would be up in War Four, but um, the next one would be Urban Shield. That's where uh, like thirty six different SWAT teams use PTR. PTR. The difference is people ask a lot about it. We haven't really put out an official video yet, but the difference between the PTR lower receiver and, and the new one is that it has a mil spec trigger. So that trigger is going to be just like a real AR-15's trigger. I've felt it, a lot of shooters have felt it, it feels exactly the same way, it's the same distance of trigger pull, same weight of trigger pull, the trigger itself actually feels the same. And it's just one more step towards realism. So the old T-68 triggers, uh, those are going away. We're not going to be using those on 468s in the future. It's moving on to this, this mil spec trigger system. That seems to be a huge hit. Even paintballers, Finch was saying that. I know French likes to shoot too, but he's primarily a paintballer, and he was saying that the trigger, he just loved it, it was crisp, and, and that's not even having anything to do with it being realistic, he just liked the trigger. Yeah, it is a nice crisp trigger pull, um, I actually enjoy it too, but when I've gotten to shoot it, I'm um, just waiting for some more upgrades to it, and I uh, can't wait to see what Omar's working on down the road. Yeah, yeah, well, he's going to change the upper too, I yeah. think he's going to add the, um, that's where he's going to add the bolt release, and that's going to be the uh, closed bolt version or something, but don't take my word for it that's so that's his project <laughs> <laughs> no dates no nothing like that yeah. at this point from me and patrick sorry guys so so end war speaking of end war we are decided this last year we waited a while to advertise for end war 4 and then it, we, did, we didn't get as big of a turnout i think because of that but this year end war 5 we're starting early all right we already decided it's going to be october 3rd 4th and 5th in 2014 it's gonna be at the same place at snake pit training center that's gonna be the home of Operation in war probably for a long time, but we're seeing about that. Yeah, I can't wait to get back out there. The field's absolutely amazing. The field was um, totally wicked, man. That yeah. was the coolest paintball field I've ever seen, honestly. I think that's the most walking I've ever done at a game in my life, though. It's also a very large <laughs> it, field. It is a big haul, but yeah. totally worth it. This, just the, the scenery by itself, taking the paintball out, just absolutely unbelievable. And then you factor in all of the different aspects. Right. The, the woods, you know, you got woods ball in there, you got the, the CQB through oh, yeah. the uh, Citadel and everything, just absolute blast. Very cool, very cool. Awesome to film, a great place for me to film. I took some of the little bit best pictures I've ever taken in my life there. I mean, the scenery in the background made the difference. So it's a really cool field, guys. Come on, War 5. This is pretty much the same deal. It's going to be like 50 bucks a day for the game, and then we do like $50 rentals. Calvers Tactical, that's actually their training ground, so they're going to be um, hosting a training course the day before the event, if you guys want to go to that. Highly recommend it. Very cool guy. named Steve that runs it, Steve Nelson. Um, awesome guy, small business, uh, definitely very knowledgeable. Run some shooting drills with him before. He's, he's definitely an expert, so if you guys want to improve your game or improve your shooting, also recommend you go to that. Oh yeah, definitely got to get, get you guys out there if you can make it out to the N-War 5. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We're already working on planning it out, getting stuff drawn up right. for the next one. Whole new, uh, we're going we're gonna to test out a whole new mission system for it. should be a lot more, uh, it's going to be a lot more player base mm -hmm. than even the past one. Each year we've progressively gone more towards a player base control. Right. Um, now we're really going to put it in the hands of the players is the name of the game. So it and should more, be a very fun game. And War 1, I, I, I didn't even work here for I wasn't even here for And War 2, that was run by Viper, right? Viper Paypal? Yeah, and War 1 and 2 are both run by uh, Viper. Um, very Once interesting two. system. Um, it's a, it's a lot of fun to do. Puts, it does put a lot of control in the hands of the players, uh, specifically the commanding officer. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, with the amount of players that we saw, at the the, uh, the Viper system works absolutely amazing with tons and tons of players, like what you see at Living Legends. Because if I'm if is I'm that a Viper? Uh, Viper Legends. is the one who hosts that. I'm not 100 percent sure cool. on that, but I believe it is his system that's used. Mm -hmm. um, but it works really, really well when you have hundreds and hundreds of players. Um, we're right now just using a little more compacted system, um, uh, kind of a variation of that, but we're, we are, we're expanding out well, to Well, we're not, we don't have hundreds of people. Yeah, exactly. Well, we might. You never know with this War 5 coming up, but let's get it out oh, there. Oh, I mean, so I soon. want to. I want to, but I think Enwar's always been about 100 players. Yeah, roughly. It's, uh, you know, it's, a mag, it's because it's MAGFED. Not many people have MAGFED markers to show up. Mm -hmm. um, 
So well, that's the perk. We do have our, you know, our full rental fleet going again, and that's true. Uh, we'll get all these guys taken care of out there. That's true. Very cool. Looking for N War Five. It's a whole year away. I will definitely get the N War Four videos out much sooner than I got the N War Three videos out. So that's cool. So vid uh, videos to expect coming up. We've got Decay of Nations. I said Decay of Nations. Actually, you were playing there first. Hit. Mm -hmm. You and Finch pretty much are the, most of the footage I got. So good to see you guys rocking the battlefield out there. We've got. Right, you see me get shot a lot in dumb charges. <laughs> okay, cool. Looking forward to that. Um, and then we've got, and then we've got MR4. So those videos are going to come out. I took a bunch of videos for that. Oh, we've got Urban Shield. Shield. We've got Magfed Game Four, and then we're working on a couple of other things. We were hoping to film more at NWAR 4. We were going to do some 468 commercials and stuff, but we just didn't have time. Well, we'll definitely get you some good footage. Uh, you know, with you being there and have having some staff present and stuff, mm -hmm. we'll get some good helmet cam footage. Some the helmet cam cams footage. are pretty cool. By the way, if you guys want to send in footage for me to edit, you know, you're using our marker or you're using DMAGs or, you know, whatever, and you want us to edit it, preference for me would be helmet cam footage. The gun footage, if you mount your, your camera to your gun, I just you pretty much stare at the floor for hours. So I'll I'll watch some footage to, to like get the good parts to pull out. And when it's gun cam footage, it's always the ground because you're standing around at like the low ready usually. You're not just gonna hold your muzzle up all the time. And so you should mount it to your mask. The video is a lot better because chances are your head's gonna be turned at whatever you're shooting at. And it's also looking around during the rest of the time so you see some cool stuff. So helmet cam footage, much yeah, better than Definitely. Cam. I've, I've experimented many times and annoyed Patrick with uh, gun cam footage. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I've watched I, many I, hours of, of, of this of guy walking around and yeah, looking at his feet. I can hear him talking, but I can't see anything. Yeah. So if, if you have the option, two cams, one on the gun, one on the helmet, oh, that usually cool. works when they're in sync. Patrick that's did a nice cool. video of me. Uh, yeah, I can I can line those up. Beta testing with the, the clear cover for the Phenom kit. Yeah, the MKP2 clear cover yeah so I mean there, there is a, it's, it works great when you have you know multiple angles going at the same time but that mm -hmm. gets pricey so yeah oh yeah of course I mean we're talking about their own stuff but anyway so you can uh, you can look forward to those in the future um, products coming out the PTR lower that's um, you know that's in testing right now and stuff like that not sure when the release date is for that the upper I think I've seen no more working on it but I'm not sure if that's that close and the next one they're talking about was either the continuous mag or the drum mag was gonna be next right yeah well um, Omar's definitely putting in a lot of time into the continuous feed mag mm -hmm. We're, we don't have any dates yet for it um, but as we get closer you'll start seeing more and more stuff pop up with us you know getting it out in the field to beta test in the hands of law enforcement and paintball players right. we want to make sure we hit everybody and make sure we get everybody covered on it to make sure it performs for the functions that we intended for which are as of course paintball and as a training tool i like it because it looks it to me it looks exactly like a 40 round p mag like a real rifle magazine it's a little bit bigger than, than a standard magazine but it, it looks it really completes the look of the 468 i feel yeah it, it definitely completes the look of 468 you put it on the side of the truck it looks awesome on yeah it. that's it's on the truck graphic too um i've been lucky enough to be able to test it in-house and it, it's just it's, it's nice to be back to having that continuous 20 round feed i love i love the standard d mags that we have right now mm. um but it will be nice once we get back that continuous feed um but you'll see me at red Dawn. well it cuts your reloads in half because with the d mag exactly. i would flipping around that that's a reload to me so it, yeah so it is double your reloads versus the uh, which is I mean that's that's also really good for some people who want to run like different kinds of ammo on each side mm -hmm. but the continuous feed yeah it'd be good to, to shoot until max spent and then get rid of it yeah with the lock hold in there you're, you're good to go because you'll know lock exactly hold. when you run out of that 20 rounds no more dry fire thing you might have a couple more nah, no it's like a gun it goes click yeah goes click so Omar's really really doing a good job on getting the P uh, the 468 to be it's just as real as it gets as far as towards the real a real AR so it's really fun to watch him do like tackle one thing at a time you know the trigger and the magazines and then I think he's working on the, the bolt release and it's just pretty much it's we're gonna have a lot of trouble shipping this internationally basically <laughs> there might be some issue with that a lot of issue even even the t60 I remember years ago I had an order going out to Egypt and we couldn't get it out there because it looked too much like a gun yeah they are very difficult to ship internationally very difficult to be on the phone with the customs agent Promising them it's not a firearm because they don't believe you at first and I don't blame them because it's made to Well seconds. luckily we got our, our 468 packaging that kind of shows that it isn't um, Yeah the materials inside it's a lot. It's a whole different packaging setup than we use with the T68 Right should help us cut back the problems and but honestly, it's really nice having a nice case to throw it into when you're uh, on the run. Yeah, you know that case? That's actually like a pretty big selling point on the gun, I think, because you don't have to buy a case for it. Yeah. No matter what your setup is, no matter what, you, you know, you put a long barrel on it, a scope and all that stuff, 
no matter what. After an unbelievable amount of stuff in those boxes in the past. Yeah. Alright guys, that was our Tech Syndicate version of Monday Night Paintball. Once again, a shout out to those guys. Love your show. Watch it all the time. Good setup. Happy to copy you. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Um, give us some feedback on this different um, setup if you like this. Let us know and we'll keep doing it in the future. Thanks a lot guys. Looking forward to hearing from you and we'll see you out there.